Texture versus clarity in Lightroom, what is the difference and which should you be applying to improve your photos? Greg from Purpose Blogger here. Thanks for joining me. Today we are going to be looking at the new texture slider in Lightroom Classic. This came around in the May 2019 update of Lightroom. So if you have Creative Cloud, you should now see this texture slider under the basic panel in the develop module. And it's just above the clarity slider here. And in this video, we're going to be talking all about it. And we're going to specifically look at clarity versus texture because they do both target contrast, but they definitely work a little differently. And so you want to understand those differences. So you start to figure out what makes sense for what photo. And of course, the best way to do this is just to experiment and play around with the sliders. So that's what we're going to do here in this video on a couple examples. So I don't want to get too technical here, but clarity basically focuses in on midtone contrast. And if you're talking about texture, it works on mid frequency. So frequency is sort of like the differences in pixels within a certain area of space. So it definitely has to do with how much edge contrast within a particular area, you know, how many different adjacent pixels by one another, where clarity is uh, going to also affect the contrast. And so you're talking about when you use the clarity slider, you're going to also see luminance changes and saturation changes that you may not see with the texture slider. Now all this, you don't really need to remember anything I just said. The basic thing to just think of is texture. Think of textured objects. It's going to bring out that texture more and more. And with the clarity slider, it's also going to do some of the same, but clarity is a little bit more heavy handed and that it also really can start to make your dark areas darker and your bright areas brighter. And we're going to see this more if we work through this example. So what I've done here is I've saved some snapshots over here. And if you don't know how to do the snapshots, it's basically any changes you can make to the sliders here. Basically, you're, these are non-destructive edits, right? So you can make a snapshot at any point in time, call it whatever you want, and it's going to save those exact slider values. So even though I just made all these changes here, if I made some changes earlier that I wanted to, to save, I can just click on that here and I'll go back to what the settings were on those snapshots. So that snapshot. So snapshots are really cool because if you make edits to your photo and you're like, oh, I like this, but I want to try something else, you can save what you like as a snapshot. And then at any point in time, you can return to whatever those settings are here because this is basically just saving all your settings over here in the sliders. So I have saved one, the original image with a couple edits, but no texture adjustments. And now if I go texture 100, now you'll see this texture slider all the way to 100. And look at the difference here in this area where they really have this texture on this cookie here. So this is no texture and this is texture. And it makes a pretty significant difference. You really do get a lot of nice contrast here. So I really like what it's doing. But if you look at the tone curve here, no texture and then texture, you see it's shifting ever so slightly. And so your highlights do get bumped just a little bit but it's a very minor shift. Now let's compare that to clarity. So I'm just gonna go back to this no uh, texture one here that has no texture, no clarity applied to it. You can see those are both at zero. If I then go clarity 100, boom, look at how not only has the contrast increased here, but also you're talking about your darks. In other words, so those actual tonal values, the darks are darker, the brights are brighter, and you lose a little bit of saturation too. So if you look at this curve down here, I'll go back to what it was before and then look at how this really grows in both directions. And so you have significant tonal shifts when you're using the clarity slider. And you have to keep that in mind because it is heavy handed if you push it all the way out to 100. And then oftentimes if you use clarity, you may find that you need to come back in here and you maybe you need to open up your shadows. Maybe you need to add back a little bit of saturation, things like that. So keep in mind, texture slider, it's going to really adjust that detail without messing too much with those actual tonal ranges. When you're doing the clarity slider, it is then really going to start to affect the luminance values, the brightness, the contrast, and to some degree, a lesser degree saturation. So you have to watch those 
when you're using the clarity slider. So just look at the example here. This is no texture, clarity 100. That's just too much. That's too heavy handed. If I go to texture 100, I do kind of like that. Of course, remember, you're not limited to one or the other. These are all non-destructive changes. So I do really like the texture slider, but if I bring back a little bit of clarity, I do sort of like some of the added contrast. I'm getting the tonal ranges. I just don't want to push it all the way up to 100. So maybe if I took clarity down to something like more like 20, I sort of like that. So just keep in mind, it's really about experimenting around and figuring out what works best and these are all non-destructive edits. You can start by pushing to the extreme, to 100, and then dial back from there. So here's another example with uh, this pumpkin risotto here. Let's just look at how clarity affects this image differently than it does texture. Uh, so first, let's texture slider. If we drag that out, we really see that it does really add some nice edge detail to this. And it's if we zoom in a little bit, it's it looks way better. So again, let me just take it off there zero that out and so it just softs and so it just brings it sharper more into focus uh, and so I do like that a lot and so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off now and then I'll zoom back out and then let's look with the clarity slider and so if we drag out clarity again in this image here you can really see how clarity can have that desaturating effect so uh, not only is maybe the brights a little blown out now and the darks maybe a little darker than you want it also has the effect of uh, taking a little saturation off this. So if I was going to use clarity on this image, I think that I would dial it back first and foremost so it's not quite so heavy handed. And then I probably would come up here in my temperature or into my saturation and I would just warm this up a little bit, add a little saturation back to the image because I feel like you lose a little bit with that clarity. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and reset that right now. So let me just set the saturation back. And then the clarity, I'm going to go ahead and do 100 because I'm going to take a snapshot just so we can look at both of these in quick unison. So clarity, 100. And then I'll get rid of the clarity for a second. And then let's bump the texture back up. And we'll do another snapshot up here. Again, snapshot's a great way to see different edits. Uh, so I will call this texture 100. And let's just cycle through these real quick. So again, here's the baseline uh, image right here. Let me bring this back open again. Here's the base, uh, cancel, sorry about that. Here, baseline image here. So this is without either, and you can see softer focus. Then when you add in the clarity, you can see clarity 100 really is a little over the top. And then texture here, texture, I like a fair amount. Maybe I would dial it back a little bit. So again, it's not always the case of using one or another. I think this photo illustrates how they definitely are working a little differently. And so you have to experiment around. But so with this one, I may keep the texture, but dial it back a little bit. And then maybe I would bring in a little bit of clarity just to sort of push that tonal range a little bit. Of course, there are always multiple ways to do things. You could also leave clarity alone and you could just push your whites and blacks up here. And so there are usually multiple ways to do things. But just understand clarity, texture work a little different and you can come in here and adjust them both differently. Now let's look at one more example where we look at texture cl and clarity and then we also look at those in concert with using local adjustment brushes. So let's look at that last example now. So let's take a look at this image here and I'm going to do the same thing where I create some snapshots. Snapshots are nice when you want to store a particular set of edits and you want to be able to get back to it. Uh, so you can do that. Just make sure if you create a snapshot, make sure you save your current edits if you want to get back because it wipes away everything that's here and it just replaces those sliders with the existing value. So in other words, if I click on this texture 100 and I just made some edits here, I'm going to lose those edits if I don't save them. So snapshots are a great way to save sets of edits if you want to get back to a particular point in time. So again, let's look at this image here. So here's the no texture and then let's look at texture 100. So let's go and jump back and forth a couple times. No texture, texture, no texture, texture. So it's really starting to add some texture here. It's bringing out contrast here, contrast here. You see it some up here. You don't see it as much down here. Now, if I zoom in here, one of the reasons why you don't see it that much here is because this is sort of an out of focus area. So there's not really a lot of edge pixel contrast in a tight area here. Whereas if I go on this napkin here, you do see it a little bit more because 
this has a lot of areas of contrast right next to each other, a little bit more texture. The same with on top of that, the drink here. So if I turn it on and off here, no texture, texture, you see it's getting applied more here, it's getting applied here, not so much here. All right, let's go back to the original. Now let's look at clarity. So clarity, again, a lot more heavy handed. You're seeing some dark areas get darker, some bright areas are getting a lot brighter. Uh, and then this area down here is definitely getting affected more than it did with texture. And so let me go back to no clarity and then clarity. And this is getting affected here because even though it is smooth, clarity is coming in and affecting that contrast in those luminance values. So these brights in here are getting brighter. The darks are getting darker. That was not happening with the texture slider. So if I go back here, I really do love the way the clarity slider is bringing out the details here, the contrast of those different tonal ranges, those highlights hitting those coffee beans. I'm not getting that with the texture slider, but it's definitely a little heavy handed up here and I don't like it so much on the napkin. But so this is where you have to remember, all these tools are non-destructive and texture and clarity can all be applied in local adjustments where you're using your adjustment brush or your gradient, your radio filter or your gradient. And so a lot of times you might want to look and see what it's doing to the different areas of your image, but then go ahead and make local adjustments to really highlight the areas of the image you want to make a certain change in. So just for example, I will go back to no texture here, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to crank. I'm going to come in here to an adjustment brush, and I'll double click effect to make sure it's zeroed out, but then I will crank this clarity up and then I want to come in and I'm just going to add that in here over top of my coffee beans. Let me adjust my brush size. It's fine if I get this bag here too. I'm going to take it to the edge of these. I'm going to take it around here. If I tap the O key, I can see if I missed any areas. O just gives you that actual representation and you can change the color of this too. Uh, but so green, just tapping it on and off to see. And so then I've really brought out that detail I want there. But then if I wanted to go ahead and do something up here, but not with this, I could do a new adjustment brush. And let's double click the effect to get it back to zero. And maybe I'll take texture way up all the way to 100, at least to start, because I can always change that. And then I'm going to use the texture over top of this drink here. And so I'm going to go ahead and add texture in here. And I might do texture in here but I don't want it so much of the edge. Maybe I want this white central area with the whipped cream and the chocolate to sort of stand out against this. You know what? I could even create a new brush and this time I'll hit effect and you can use texture as sort of like a smoothing tool. It was actually originally created as sort of a quick skin softening tool. Uh, of course, that doesn't come into play as much with food photography unless you have yourself or someone else in the shot. But if I wanted to come in here and just use more of this smoothing effect here, and I'm just going around now the outside. And so I just want to sort of bump up the contrast between this and this. And so maybe I'm coming in here to just sort of get rid of some of the detail in here, right? And then of course I could decide, well, that is more than I want. This is all adjustable. So maybe I'll just bring it back a little bit, something more like that. And so again, now I'm using these multiple adjustments and I'm coming in and deciding specifically what areas I think clarity is going to work better on, what areas I think texture is going to look better on. And of course, you can use all these in concert. You can use it together. You can use one. You can use the other. You can do these local adjustments. And so it just really gives you more options. I find I like the texture slider a lot, but there are still areas where sometimes clarity is going to come in and it's going to really add and pump up that contrast. Uh, sort of that tonal range when you want it. You just have to keep in mind, if you go clarity on certain images, it's going to be heavy handed and you're going to either have to drag up the shadows, adjust the saturation, or maybe it's a case where the texture tool is really going to give a better job. So the bottom line is it's another great option within Lightroom. And the best thing you can do is just experiment around on a lot of images. And you're really going to start to see when you like to apply texture when you like to apply clarity, remember non-destructive edits, go in there, make adjustments, use these local adjustment tools, and really find a way to make these tools 
make your photography and your final images better. All right, so that's a new texture tool in Lightroom and how it compares with the Clarity slider. So I hope you take advantage of them. And as always, if you share this video, if you like it, if you subscribe, that really helps this channel grow. So thank you so much, and I will talk to you soon.